So we're out here today uh, to kind of finish up a, a PM and then we found things that were wrong. A lot of this equipment was replaced by two chucks in a truck. As you'll see, some of these units are completely lopsided. That one there doesn't drain right. You can look at the roof line there to the top. That's crooked. That one over there is crooked. This one here had no return air, so they brought 100% outside in. Heat exchanger's cracked. It's only a year old. Manufacturer says no warranty now. The Jade controller out of that one was never installed. This one here, they tied Y1, Y2 together. That's gonna make the Jade go right into mechanical cooling. These here, two units were changed out and Dingleberry, he didn't uh, make sure he had the right size unit. So if you look at this here, you can see the curb there on the right and there at the left. Look at this. See the air filters? Yeah, there's a big ass freaking gap in between here. It's sucking all the air from the ground, which yeah, it's supposed to pull air in right there, but it's supposed to be able to be metered. Here it's pulling the leaves right in. Well, what the guy did, because he didn't understand the wiring, he just went ahead and took some of these little cheap cooler stats or whatever, just threw the bulb in down here. Well, it's not heating properly. Two stage units set up for single stage. You name it, it ain't right. So this is gonna be the tangoidal mist that I'm gonna be messing with today. We're gonna try to figure out what's what. Jim Bob there obviously uh, didn't uh, want to figure that out, so he just hooked that other stat up. You can see we have some thermostat wires here, you know, unprotected. On that unit over there, thermostat wire was literally laying across the heat exchanger. So not only is it crooked, but the thermostat wires was laying across the, therm uh, across the heat exchanger. I had to do a temporary fix, to, you know, before it ends up melting the wires off. The reason why it wasn't running is because the belt got so loose that it snapped and broke so i drilled through the side here ran it across punched up and came through at least now it's not uh, on the heat exchanger but we're going to come and uh, lift this and level it up for them either the roof sagging or whatever but either way it should have been addressed so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find the uh, wires going to the thermostat uh, they're uh, thhn wires they're not traditional thermostat so what i've done is i've killed power here i got power off i'm going to see if it kills the thermostat see if we're on the right circuit and we're going to use the uh, wire tracer to see if we can trace these wires it's uh 10 degrees and with wind chill about three i don't know why Today was chosen to be a good day to do this, but that's what we're doing. It doesn't bother you until you take your gloves off. So anyhow, I'm going to uh, go down and see if that uh, wiring is going to that box. All right, hopefully we don't get a copyright strike thanks to them jamming out on the radio. The uh, area it takes care of is a pool area, so it's definitely high humidity in here. We're kind of tracing these down. What don't make sense is that it actually has Y hooked up and there's no cooling obviously up there unless they're, you know, they don't even have mechanical dampers. I don't know what they're doing. I, like I said, it probably was a totally different system and some chuck in the truck came in and underbitted people and uh, this is what ends up happening. It looks like it must have been it because it's dead. Uh, what I'm going to do is see if we can pull those back out and put that toner on there. They went from, it looks like 12 gauge to thermostat wire it's not uncommon I, I wonder if that is controlling uh, I know what it is that's controlling the exhaust fans is what I think it goes to the uh, little sensor thingy here you can tell it was in pretty bad shape thanks to the pool it uh, it broke so they're gonna need a new thermostat non programmable is probably gonna be the best way to go uh, especially for the pool area. So let's go get the tracer and see what we get. I've done a video on this before. It's just a toner. Telephone guys, network guys use these. So just it's made for phone and data. Well, tracing data wires, not really live data wires, but got links down below. All right, let's go see if we can trace some wires now. Now this is kind of nice. Come in. It says bingo so right there is the white wire that we had down there on the wall see it right there so that's powering the coil on that relay 
then that comes to this low voltage fucking wire, which then travels up to here. Which it's isolated, so obviously it's not going through. I'm surprised we're even getting bleed through. It shouldn't be. But it's practically done. All they had to do was hook the sucker up. The problem I run into is people are just so lazy. Now this has, I believe, two stage, and of course, can't read the uh, instructions or the destructions. Nothing on that. Some basic wire troubleshooting here. The other one over there, I believe, had the wiring diagram on it. But at least now we know where we're going with that. Now I think what they're doing for the cooling is they're controlling the exhaust fans. This does not have a dehumidification unit on it. Most of the places that have pools that I've worked on have outside air, along with air conditioning, along with heat, all combined into one. Dectron unit is what's at one of the other locations I've worked at. Yeah, exhaust, see exhaust fans. That's most likely there's east exhaust fan. Those are both probably coming down to the uh, cooling terminals. Humidistat, they don't even have that. I don't even know where that's at if they even have one. And then there's your fan, which I bet the fan brings on the blowers. That way, if you're pulling it out with the exhaust fans, you'll be bringing air into the building. If we go over there to the transformer, you can see a black and red wire right over there. Follow that over. Here's the red distributing to everything else. And then there's the black. So this is going to be your common. Here's your R. And then it's just going to divert to whatever relay is doing what. Just isolation relays, not uh, anything spectacular here. I would bet that this right here, yep, look at that. There's G, green. At least they use some colors that are halfway smart. There's that orange wire, which I forget what our orange was, but that's getting, all that's getting powered. These are the common terminals, as you can see, they're jumping here to there. And exhaust fans are just using bigger contactors for that. And those are being powered off of one common wire to that side of the contactor. And this is your uh, bet you Y1, Y2. So we'll just track that down and see what we get. I took the uh, cover off that one. And we're able to see where things are at. We got R coming up to number 8, so 8 is R, W goes to 12, W2 goes to 13, common goes to 7. I don't see G yet, it might be automatic, but blower motor contactor. What I end up doing is bringing over this schematic and writing in here what the color, uh, numbers are for what terminal. As we come back over to here, we look at this, I unhook the Jim Bob special. If you follow this contactor here, when you turn it on, immediately comes on. What they've done is they've taken the red terminal up to number three and they've taken the brown terminal to number seven. Three and seven. Seven we know is common so we know that's that and three there's three right there. Customers normally close alarm contacts. Smoke detector you have R coming over to five. Five going to three which that goes to the transformers uh, feed. So they've just taken it straight over to R, bypassing all this crap. And the alarm will break R going to the thermostat, which will then break everything else. Myself, personally, I like seeing an alarm come in right at the transformer, which I think is what they've done here. Yep, okay, so they are breaking it. Uh, here's the transformer. Here's the alarm. It's a normally closed switch. They're bringing R into the alarm panel, back out of the alarm panel and bringing it back on three. Three. So there's three, then three feeds all this other stuff. So, okay. The question is, shouldn't this fan run all the time? I'm going to say probably so, because they got to sense the, you know, they got to have constant air movement everywhere. In a commercial building, usually you got to bring constant air into the building. I'm gonna leave the blower running all the time. There's nothing wrong with the way they've got that wired, so we're gonna leave that alone. All we need to really do is focus on heat, uh, cycle heat on and off, and then hopefully, since you didn't screw with it, those exhaust fans that were thrown on the other side of this pool area, they are gonna continually run. Now, he only hooked up W1, which is probably why this area is kinda of cold now that we're 10 degrees outside. We're going to pick another terminal for W2. Like I mentioned, it's like 10 degrees out here. My freaking hands are turning red 
So I'm not gonna spend all day uh, being perfect here. Isolation relays, other side in the box, 8R12, W1, W2. I'm going with some new colors, stripped this wire back, got rid of that garbage, unhooked that junk stat, let it dangle. We can do this in the summer when it's freaking warm. I'm gonna run unprotected wire all the way across there. It's not the right way to do it, but it can be done later. Uh, we just need to get this thing working properly. It's been like this for at least a year or two, and it ain't right. On that piece over there, I'm gonna see if I can get a piece of cardboard and block the underside until we can come back and redo the curb. That's our plan, Chucky. That's our plan. So at least we know the uh, safety device for the fire alarm is wired correctly. We're good there. Let's go over here and fix this other manstrosophy. Hopefully these relays still work. I know that eight is W2. I'm going to use that as my W2 just because it's available. I don't need to worry about G because G is not being used for anything uh, uh, for the fan because we're going to run these constantly. So we're going to use that available uh, terminal uh, for that. We're bouncing back and forth, but we just changed uh, these filters and you can see these leaves that are getting sucked in, which is great. <sighs> really great. Got electrical wires here just dangling. Like I said, you can see the... This just wrong. It's so wrong. Oh wow, look at all these freaking leaves have gotten in here. This is ridiculous. Plum ridiculous. You would think like people would have a conscience, but they don't. Uh, we could get rid of the common wire down there. I'm a little bit leery of cutting that G terminal because I have a funny that G funny feeling that G is potentially powering those exhaust fans, and I don't want the exhaust fans to not run. I would rather have to run the thermostat on batteries uh, than to give up that common and screw myself. That way we can have at least W1, W2. Let's do that. What I did is I cut them long. That way you can, you don't have to remember. You could write it down too. R's red. Looks like Y was orange. The uh, W was uh, white and then common was blue. So the blue is that black one. That's the one I'm going to use for my heat. The green wire, actually, since it was going to Y, it was controlling the exhaust. That's what I think they were doing with it. They didn't write down what they were doing with it, but that's that makes the most sense. We got her switched around. We got orange here on W2, uh, white on W1. I used blue for that Y2. We got blue, which is a color we used to use at one of the places I worked at. So I got that there. It's easy to remember. That's what's really important. So when you're up on the roof, you know what's going on. So we're good there. That locks in. It mounts okay. It ain't wonderful. I believe this part here will fit. Yes, it will. Good enough. And as you can see, it's a little bit cool in the pool area. It usually want to be about two degrees warmer than what your water is. That way your water doesn't evaporate. Well, their water, they're trying to hold, I think, at 84. So we're probably gonna run about 86. So we'll try that. Fan, uh, it's not, it wasn't used on this other one at all. So we're not even, so the fans they're talking about must be the fans for the building. Uh, and they weren't even hooked up. So they're doing that off of Y1 and Y2. That should get us started. I got the wire ran. Along with that one there, it's wire tied. It's not the way it should be done. I already know this, but they can fix it when they come back to do all this other stuff. It'll be good enough to get us to heat on and get things going. Got two relays here. I prefer to have two of the Honeywell slash Mars, whatever, or double pull, double throw. And since that one, original w1 is being used i just got a single i hate these i think these are junk but this is the only two i got on my truck so they're gonna have to work this is the other unit let's get it wired up real quick all we're doing is thermostat calls coming in powering w1 a w2 that's not in there yet which will probably come over here and then loops it over there it uses the transformer over there it's gonna be completely isolated so that unit is nothing more than a thermostat coming over here, and this is just a thermostat with a relay coil, basically. So these contacts are gonna close. It's gonna keep this transformer isolated from this unit. It's called an isolation transformer. Old school, that's exactly what they did here. 
Uh, by doing the double pull, you're able to run W2 for one unit here, the other unit here. We're gonna use the normally open contacts. That's in the unenergized state is what normally open means. Normally closed means it's normally closed in the unenergized state. There's our coil. And then same thing here, just gotta look it up. Coil is going to be three and one. Contact points are gonna be four and two. And uh, should be good to go. I don't blame you if you can't follow along, but here's what we got. Wire comes in, brought it through the bottom. Came up to here, not the way I wanna do it. Here's the other unit. We've got W2, which is going over on the blue here. I gotta tighten that up better. W1 is coming up here to the single relay. The coils are paralleled on with coils of W1 down here. The other contacts were being used for something. Don't know what. This thing's a fluster mess. Who knows what in the world they were doing. That common wire is now unhooked and it's going to be the coil for W2. So this is now W2's power. The common is these blue wires, which I piggybacked off of the common, which all these are sharing. And I got it also over to the common on this. So it's pretty simple, but it looks like a total flipping mess. And it is. Everyone here knows I got this blue marker. So I'm marking it here so they know the bottom X-former powers the relays and stat. Each heat unit uses its own X-former and is isolated with W1 and W2 relay. I did not wire the rest. That way when they say, what in the heck happened here? Screw you, I didn't do it. So I made sure that we were just using the power from each unit isolated here. The controls down below on the coils is powered by that transformer down there, which is also powered by the thermostat. Everything looks to be powered correctly. We got orange coming up to the R that's being powered from this particular unit closest to us. Common for that is being powered off the same transformer down below. That black wire is my W2 from down below. Everything should work. Let's go ahead and shut them down, hook them up, and see if it runs. See that little cardboard box there? That's my duct work to block it off for now until they get here to help uh, keep the leaves and crap out of it. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Not as pretty as I usually do it, but my fingers, I can't feel them. So let's just uh, worry about that later. Half the time I see guys leaving the damn things dangles all over the freaking place, stray wires. You don't know if they're live or what. So let's see if this thing goes straight to the second stage. It kicked on and you can tell it's in high fire because that's more steam coming out of it than I've ever seen yet. The other one's not even put nowhere near that. So we're actually hammering out some uh, freaking air now, which is good. That's partially open, that's good. Now it can handle it. I'll button that up here in a minute. Let's go get this turkey done. As you can see, that one over there is cranking it. This one here, not even nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this thing down. I've got it wired up the same way. Contactors all the time for the uh, fan. W1, W2, got to label that yet. It's able to run it right in through the side here. Like I said, not the way I would do it. Didn't install it, my company did not install this. We sure as heck would never done nothing like this. Now what I did do, I'm writing it in here again. 8, 12, and 13, stat relay at East Heater. Not pretty, but guess what? You actually know where the heck things are going. You know what's gonna happen is, is this label is gonna get destroyed and you're not gonna have it to look at. Uh, you can tell how the other one looks. This one here is getting destroyed too because uh, snow and stuff gets in there. So this thing should kick on and run now. Uh, and then we gotta work on trying to get that blocked off down below there. When we do that though, we're gonna have to open up this damper. Let's go ahead and open that up a little bit. That way when we block off the bottom, it won't be completely screwed, hopefully. There we go. See how that is? Definitely not no duck balancer. Quack, quack, quack. Went ahead and stripped this down long ways. Kind of folding it over. Got it in there. We're going to zip screw here and here. The rain eventually is going to wear it out, but I think they're going to be down here possibly in a week or so, whatever better than what it was and it's been like this for a year and a half or longer doing what we can with what we got to work with they had a lot of these leftover gas risers and stuff so I put one underneath that side and one this other side this is hillbilly as hell but like I said I wasn't supposed to do that when I came down here what I was supposed to have done was just change some filters 
and tweak a couple other things and that was supposed to be it but this got thrown in on top of it i'm going to go downstairs and turn it down make sure they shut down make sure they stage properly let's go down there and check see what's going on in the uh, pool area it is 76 in here so far let's see what the pool water's doing it's being great to drop my phone down here in it oops a little too far Running right at 84 degrees. You've got to have a temperature difference to have evaporation, as you guys already know. That's why you got to keep it so warm. So 84, technically you need 86. Now supposedly these are the exhaust fans. I haven't checked to make sure, but I did turn them back on. I want to make sure they run still. Let's turn this thing down a little touch. Make sure it shuts off. And then we'll go upstairs. Now, one of the other disasters we got going on here is this. Uh, they've got a stat that does nothing more than read temperature in the room. This is a uh, duct sensor to make up air unit in all reality. But it doesn't have a thermostat override. And so I'm going to check the back of this to see if there's a place to override inside of here. Uh, I was told they might have one there. It does not appear to have anything on the back side. Manuals, of course, are all missing, and the manuals that I've got are unfortunately not quite the right ones. Uh, this is another, this is what I was originally down here for. <laughs> and then all this other stuff got piled on. Uh, and then we did the PM and all that, so anyhow, uh, it's at least holding the uh, gymnasium 70 degrees. I got jumped by the racquetball guys. Man, it's hot in here. All right, good, that shut down. And so they were running at like 72 in there which man an exercise place that's like way too freaking hot and that shut down good let's go turn it back up again gotta check those exhaust fans yet okay this one's working yep it's pulling out some humidity then we got this one over here now i will tell you i did a video of that little unit right there you see how everything else is here, you really wouldn't notice the gas line that I ran in three quarter inch black. Uh, I forget what the heck that stuff's called. That one's running too, good. Uh, they didn't even hook the gas line up to that unit. It was just off. So that's a video I was gonna show and I just never got around to it yet. I might show it. It's kind of funny because I don't notice it at first. Uh, they had a thermostat wire all dangling. I got it inside the boxes and conduit. Just common. Oh, just common stuff. Let's go back down there and turn that up. And uh, those exhausts on and stuff, it should start uh, bringing the uh, temperature up and hopefully remove some of the humidity as best as possible. The uh, air outside is pretty dry. The uh, one we just looked at is that unit over there. It's holding the temperature. It ain't what uh, I figured it should be. I believe it's made by Sterling. I've never worked on any of their equipment. Anyhow, let's go back down. I went ahead and checked the temperature rise just a little bit ago and they are operating properly which is great uh almost forgot got to change this limit obviously it was bad it uh, was damaged when the belt broke you can see it smacked the living snot out of things the pulleys were not aligned got that uh realigned when we were here the other day belts on uh had to repair the wire so that's uh got that one up and going too all right guys that's going to wrap things up so hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please hit that thumbs button down below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the facebook and instagram pages and until next time guys we will catch you on the next one later